In this example, we want to actually prove Coulomb's law from Gauss's law. So the given in the problem is that you have a charge Q, and it's located at some point, it's a fixed charge, and I want to calculate the electric field or find the electric field at some point here, a distance r away from the charge. And I'm going to assume in this problem that I don't know Coulomb's law. So I want to prove Coulomb's law, actually. We're going to use Gauss's law. So the steps of the solution, the first step, we need to know what the direction the electric field would be at, at, a distance, at any point around the charge. And so we know that a point charge, the electric field lines go radially outward from the charge. So always the, the electric field lines going radially outward. So based on this choice, we need to choose a Gaussian surface. That's the second step. So what shape of Gaussian surface should we take to solve the problem? Remember, Gauss's law doesn't tell you what shape the surface would be. It, Gauss's law is valid for any kind of shape. So you need to choose the shape yourself to fit the particular problem. So on what basis will you choose your Gaussian surface in this particular problem? I'm going to tell you that we're going to choose a sphere and I'll show you why we're going to choose a sphere. Because in Gauss's law, you have integration of E dot dA. So in order to get the electric field outside of the integration, you need to be able to get rid of the dot product. By making a sphere, a spherical surface, we know that the electric field vector and the area vector are going to be always parallel. So the angle is always going to be zero. So that way I can get rid of the dot product in Gauss's law. We're going to see this in detail in the a, in a, in a next slide. So if you remember Gauss's law, it says that integration of E dot dA through a closed surface is Q inside over epsilon naught. Well, E dot dA is E dA cosine theta. Remember, this is being integrated, summed over the whole surface. So how can we make a surface such that the cosine of the angle is the same everywhere and you can get rid of this cosine uh, so that you can take the electric field outside of the integration. You want, to, you want to take in the end the electric field outside of the integration. If you have this cosine inside, the integration will be very difficult to do. So by choosing the surface to be a sphere, the angle between the electric field and the area becomes zero. So cosine zero is one. So we got rid of the cosine. Now that doesn't necessarily guarantee by getting rid of the cosine that you're going to be able to get the electric field outside. The, the, to get the electric field outside of the integration, that's based on the fact that the elect from symmetry. Even though I don't know the value of the electric field at any point on the surface of the Gaussian sphere, I know that it should be the same value from symmetry. If you go any point on the sphere, go around the sphere from point to point, everything looks exactly the same. There's no reason for the electric field value to be different over here than over here. Of course, the direction is different, but there's no reason for the magnitude to be different. So from symmetry, you can say that the electric field will have the same value. Even though I don't know what the value is, it's the same everywhere. So that's why I can take it outside of the integration. Now, once you took the electric field outside, what's left over is integration of dA. Integration of dA is just the total surface of the Gaussian sphere, which is 4 pi r squared. I can, the left-hand side of Gauss's law becomes the electric field, which I don't know, times 4 pi r squared. What about the right-hand side of Gauss's law? The right-hand side of Gauss's law is asking to find, tell me what is the charge inside the surface. Well, how much charge is inside the surface? The charge inside the surface is just Q. So that means I put here Q. So this is the final expression from which we can get the electric field. If you just multiply, divide by 4 pi r squared, you get the final result that the electric field is Q over 4 pi epsilon naught r squared. And we know before that Ke is just 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. So you can write the electric field as Ke Q over r squared. So we've basically proved Coulomb's law starting from Gauss's law.